Hello, my friends, and thank you so much for joining me today. So I was thinking about palettes recently, and I know I mentioned in a video, it seems like there aren't quite as many palettes coming out these days, and maybe maybe there is a little less, you know, right now it might not be a prime time of year for it. But lo and behold, I do a little more looking, and I'm like, actually, there are more palettes than I really thought in the big picture. And I thought I would do a video about palettes today and talk about the things that maybe I'm tempted to buy, the things that I'm definitely not buying, and even a few things here at the start that I wouldn't have bought, but I got them in PR, and maybe they've surprised me a little bit. Now one of those is this NARS Summer Unrated palette. I have not gotten along well with NARS Eye palettes in the past. I, I can't even think of one that has really like knocked my socks off in a huge way way in the last couple of years. But this one I've been using, and I do have it on today for just a very natural look, but I've been using this so much, and I actually think it's really good. I think it's well balanced. I think the textures are nice, even some that they may have gone out on a limb a little bit with. They're still good. Um, this row over here, like these shades end up being total crease colors for me. Like, those are in my crease. You wouldn't think they're that dark. I actually kind of screwed up with one. I started to put it on as a highlight the other day. I'm like, whoa, way more colorful than I anticipated. Um, it ends up being kind of like a rosy, warm palette. That's kind of what a lot of these mattes give off. So you set your crease up with that, and then you've got kind of golds and rosiness throughout um, the rest of the palette. And I really have liked it. I don't think I would have bought it, though, is the thing, if I hadn't gotten it in PR. Given just my past with different NARS eye palettes, I haven't been super impressed. I'm not saying they're the worst things in the world, but compared to, you know, the whole palette landscape out there, I wouldn't be seeking it out. And this one, is, at a glance, really doesn't seem that unique, so I'd probably feel like, okay, I can get along without it, but I really, truly have enjoyed it, so I thought I would shout that out, and I'll probably talk more about this in another video. Here's one that I have yet to try, and I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it. I wouldn't have bought it, but I did get it in PR. It's the Natasha. Asha Denona Pastel Palette. I'm just not huge on pastels. Like if we're talking color on the eyes, I'm much more interested in going for a jewel tone or a, a rich color in some way. Like I prefer a dark navy over let's say a light blue, but this is what this one looks like, gang, and I will try it. And maybe some of these shades will actually be a little richer, you know, like I, I don't think everything in here is a light Easter egg color. Some clearly are, but some still aren't. So I'm willing to give it a fair shot. It is not going to be a palette that aims to achieve some of the things I love with palettes, which is some kind of real darkness and smokiness. I mean, we got this plummy purple up here that'll be fun to pair with some different things, but it's going to be a palette that overall, I think, seeks to be kind of light and airy on the eyes as opposed to having a lot of dark like shades pulling it back down and contrasting with these colors. You know what I mean? Because we only have that one option really. So I'm going to use it with an open mind, but I, I wouldn't have gotten it for myself. I'm just swiping through my phone. I took screenshots. Okay, the Urban Decay Wild Greens Eyeshadow Palette. $44. It is a 12 shade palette, and I really wasn't considering it at all until I saw Boise Beauty on Instagram. She was talking about it. She thinks it is an absolutely stunning palette and it did look great on her. Um, sometimes with palettes it's like seeing them online versus seeing the palette in person and seeing them on somebody. Different things can be revealed and it seemed like a really beautiful palette and it does seem well balanced and it does seem like there's you know matte and shimmer and I love a, a shimmery green and um, that's a light shade that I do like to work with and I'm just really wanting to try that and I think I probably will. I was just so convinced by her review. I think she gives some very on point feedback about products that really like resonates with me and I take it in and I'm like, okay, I, I, I get it now. And that's one thing where I'm thinking, yeah, I'm definitely gonna give it a shot. Here's something I saw on Ulta's website from Tarte. I believe this was Ulta, maybe it was Sephora, probably on both, but it's the new Tartlet Blush in Bloom Amazonian Clay Cheek Palette. So we know they have like their in bloom um, eye palette. They came out with an even bigger eye palette recently and now they've got this little blush trio, which, looks pretty enough, but I'm definitely not gonna get it. You know, for some reason, it just doesn't speak to me. I'm sure those are blush shades I've got several times over, but I have found myself actually in just the last couple weeks trying a lot more in terms of different blush textures. I'm looking right out in front of me. 
I've got a liquid blush. I've got a couple stick blushes. I've got a little pot cream blush. I've got a Neutrogena stick. It's kind of like I know what I like in terms of powder blushes and now I'm branching out a little bit more on texture and so that's why maybe this isn't speaking to me quite as much even though I probably would like those colors on my skin. Now at Ulta I saw this Rainforest Temptations Amazonian Clay Eye and Cheek Palette from Tarte and this is a format that I, I do like. I think it's very compact. They stick a blush in the middle which is tempting and this has like some reddish warmth that looks like some kind of bronzy, orangey bronze type colors, as well as some deep tones too, but I'm just, you know, I, I think I can get away without it. It's not feeling like must-have status to me, and I've already got, you know, that NARS Summer Unrated where I am enjoying the warmth in that as well, and kind of seeing some similarities at a glance, although the NARS has more of a pinky rosy thing happening in it. So this, I mean, I, I do like that they put a blush in there. I think that's cool, but I think I can get along with without it. Um, Makeup Revolution. Now here's a palette that totally appeals to me in terms of the color scheme. It's a huge palette. This one of their Maxi Reloaded palettes. Just giant. And it's got some plums and it's got some bronze and peachy shades. And at a glance it seems like the tones I would really really like. It's a 45 shade palette. But here's what gets me. They do kind of a scrambled thing with these larger palettes. Instead of going in sort of a gradient where you can see about how many light shades, about how many mid-tones, you know, kind of see how everything stacks up. It's like they did that and then they just press the button that says shuffle <laughs> and it all moved around. And what I'm sensing when I try to hone in on, like, let's pick out mid-tone beigey bronze colors, I think there's a lot more than is necessary in here. But it's harder to know it when stuff is all scrambled up and you're more likely to just see that and maybe think, okay, an $18 huge palette with colors I like, boom, I'm going for it. But then I think you'd get it home and be like, well, I didn't need this many rosy shades or I didn't need this many bronzes. I don't know for sure. See, I haven't gotten it in front of me to see the real thing, so you got to take some of this that I'm saying with a grain of salt. But the reason why I kind of like videos like this is because we are all in positions where we're in a decision-making process about things at different times, and this is my decision-making process is on this, is that I don't quite trust this palette because I feel like it's going to be loaded with repeats. And I think if they laid it out shade by shade in a gradient, it would become very obvious, and this way it doesn't have to be so obvious because it's all scrambled up. I do like the color scheme though. I think it would be pretty. Um, how about this J-Cat Beauty Viva La 24 Pigment Musical Palette? Now when we're talking about color and color I like to wear, this is speaking to my preferences a lot more than say the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette does. Like I'm seeing rich reds, plums, it seems like pinky shades that have a little more pull to them, um, a whole half of the palette that seems kind of neutral, deeper. I would be open to trying it. I'm seeing the price was only $14 to begin with and it's been marked down to $10.49. It's a 24 shade palette. I don't know. I, I might think about that one, actually. I don't think I need it, but you see the reasons why that's appealing to me. It's hard for me to tell what the finishes are in there. So maybe I could do a little more investigating on like how much is matte, how much is shimmer and all that. But at a glance, that's the kind of palette I see and I think, ooh, color-wise that looks good. It does have some bright bluish pops in there, but it's got just so many different ways to kind of pull it back, reel it back, make it a little deeper. So I like that. Here's another thing on Sephora. I don't know why we're bouncing around here, but that's just the way the screenshot is in my phone. This Huda Beauty Lunar New Year Obsessions Eyeshadow Palette. I know this has been out for a little while, um, but it is still one of the newer palettes showing up if you look under that filter on the website. And I do like a lot of Huda eyeshadow stuff, so I thought I would address this one. I think it looks fine. I see it and I think, yep, I can see where I'd probably go with the look. I can predict kind of how that bronzy golden look would be. I see a nice deep shade or two in there that would play with the lighter shades nicely and provide that contrast. But to me, just not different enough. Typically the Huda palettes are doing something a little bit more different to draw me in, you know, and this one just seems more basic, I guess. So to me, even though I really like the quality quality of Huda shadows and I find them easy to work with. The pigmentation is really good for as easy and low fuss as the shadows turn out to be, you know, not kicking up a lot of fallout, easy to build up. They manage to execute a lot of different textures well, but this one still just isn't really calling to me. Something on Beautylish that I wanted to mention here, they have taken Viseart palettes that were 80 bucks 
and they're downsizing them and making them petite palettes. So you can look at all the different options. The um, in the low palette that I love so much, I love those tones of like the warmth and then there's like a deep blue and a hot pink in that one. I, I love that color scheme, but now they're half the price and they're giving you a smaller amount of product, which is totally sensible given the fact that these are very pigmented shades and I don't think you'd need a ton of them. But I do feel in the past several years Viseart has made a very conscious effort to make themselves more like consumer friendly. Um, I think people at first saw them as just something for makeup artists but now you know they're, they're petite palettes they're trying to come out with things that can give you the really great quality but at a more approachable price and I think that's exactly what's going on here. It's the exact same layout of products. It seems like the same shades. Granted, I don't have, you know, one of these smaller palettes in my hands to tell you for sure, but I do have the larger versions of these different ones, and I think they're absolutely great. So I won't be, you know, buying these just for the sake of having the new format. I don't think that's needed because it does seem to be the exact same thing, but in terms of my advice to others, I think this is a great deal because you are not needing a lot of these individual colors to make it go on your eyes. Viseart Shadows Pack a Punch, if you want that classic, you know, like the matte palette that it all started with, that's in here. There's the warmer one. So many options. It's on Beautylish, $40, just like those $80 ones, which weren't massive, but, you know, they downsized, and it looks like it's that wraparound packaging, which I really like. It's been sturdy and nice for me in other palettes that I have um, with that design. So I give them a thumbs up. I think they're really trying to expose more people to their stuff and make it much more approachable. Also what I saw on Beautylish, this By Terry VIP Expert palette. Oh, this is so aesthetically pleasing. This is $56 and it looks just like bronzy goodness, okay? The imprints on the shadows, I know I am being swayed by the way they cutely made this because now I'm telling myself, pretend, pretend like none of that's there. What do you see with the eyeshadows? Well, I see a bunch of bronze and maybe rose gold and some brown. I don't know, I have all those shades. I probably won't get this, but this one is tempting me. I think it looks beautiful and it probably would create some really effortless looks on the eyes. I have a sense that that those shimmers are probably shades that could easily be one shadow looks. There are shimmers that work really well in the crease as well as on the lid, and that's what that palette seems like. They don't seem like fussy, hard to build up textures. They're probably really soft and nice, so I'm tempted by that one. Also tempted by this Danessa Myricks um, Beauty Dewy Cheek and Lip Palette. Yes, throw out a multitasking idea to me and I'm listening. Um, they've got this in a couple of different shades, one that seems a little bit more like contour oriented and and then this blushy one just really has me interested. Has anybody tried this? Would you recommend it? The shades look really beautiful and fresh and I feel like every single color could work on cheeks or lips, um, but it can also be hard at times for a palette to do both. So I might dig in and read a few more reviews on that, do my research a bit more, but it looks really good. Also, what is this? This Jill Stewart Beauty Bloom Mix Blush Compact. They've got all these different shades. Looks like a little flower, okay? And it says a five-tone blush to create any look you desire. One compact for color and definition, five colors in each palette, including blush and highlight colors. I like the idea of the mixture of colors. I mean, to me, that could even be, some of these could be eye palettes, you know, too. The multitasking kind of monochromatic abilities with this seem like they're really there, and I just think they're gorgeous. They're really pretty to look at, and that's another thing where, gosh, you know, it caught in a moment of weakness, I might just snap it up, but I think I will take my time and look into that a little bit more and see what people are saying about them. If you've tried one, please let me know but they just look cute as heck and absolutely right up my alley. Over on Trend Mood, that's a fun place to check the Trend Mood Instagram account. I'm sure you know about it. Follow it and they post about new releases. And I saw that Melt is putting out a part two of the Gemini palette. I actually do have the Gemini one. That would be definitely worth pulling out and rediscovering for me. But the Gemini two is probably loaded even more with things that I like. Warm neutrals and some cool olive tones, like the tones you probably enjoyed from the first palette. And I know the quality will be there with this one because I really liked it on the first and I'm, I'm definitely thinking about it. That one is calling to me on a number of levels. You know that reddish shade in there, um, the deep greens just look so nice and I could see them pairing really well with the lighter peachy shades too. So I'm gonna say that's a probably for me. That's a probably one. And finally, this is a probably for me. 
Okay, Hindash has a new palette. It's being called the Monochromance <laughs> palette, which is a brilliant name. Now I have his original palette and I need to use it more. Like I, I need to bring that back out of retirement because I like that and I love the gradient thing that is going on here. And here, I feel like we have some softer colors going on, a little more color to play with overall. And in a sense, if you use your hand and you like cover up, half of the palette you'd say but M, that's a lot of pastel but look at the balance okay look how every pastel is balanced with depth of a coordinating shade and so uh, that's speaking to me big time so that's a probably the Gemini 2 is a probably to be continued on the Jill Stewart and the Danessa Myrick stuff from Beautylish I don't think I'll get the by Terry I probably won't get that J cat beauty one thinking now about everything I, I think that's a no and I'm gonna get the wild greens from Urban Decay three things I'm gonna go for but also wanted to share with you the reasons why I'm not going for other things. So let's get into a conversation in the comments section. What are your thoughts on some of these different products? Man, my hands are so dry. Holy cow. Like they're on another level of dry. I need to get some lotion. Thank you for your time, everyone. I love you and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Ooh, I did want to share what's on my skin today. I'm wearing this Turn Up the Base um, BB Cream, BBB Cream, Beauty Blur Balm from One Size. I've got that all over. On my cheeks, I'm wearing a new cream blush that I'm trying from Fenty, and it's in the shade Bikini Martini. It's like a bright pink, but obviously I've got it kind of sheared out there. On my lips is my Estee Lauder. This is the Pure Color Revitalizing Crystal Balm in Hope Crystal, that pretty like reddish casual shade. And then, like I said, the NARS Summer Unrated palette is on the eyes. So I'm going for good now. Thank you guys. Love you. Bye.